Hey guys, if you are aspiring for a data scientist role, then it becomes very important for you to understand and learn the pandas library in Python. In pandas, there is something called data frame. With data frame, we can really do lot many things. In this video, we are going to learn using data frame, how can you read a CSV file? We will also see using data frame, how you can read an Excel file, how you can get the top values from an excel file you will also see how to use a data table and to convert that to a data frame what is data frame in detail you are going to learn in this video so let's get started now the very first thing we would like to understand what is a data frame to start with simply look at this image data frame means combination of rows and columns rows and columns you have seen an excel file where you have you might have stored a lot of data so excel contains rows of data and also have columns so that is a data frame that we we will be using a lot many times this word called data frame so anytime this word comes just imagine an excel file having some data with rows and columns pretty simple now we must understand some practical usage of data frame now for this i'll be using jupyter notebook anyone who is very new and doesn't know how to utilize Jupyter, how to install Jupyter Notebook. I have a playlist, kindly follow that and install Jupyter Notebook. Assuming that you already know, let's get started. Now in the very first cell, I am going to convert this to Markdown. And let's write some header. This notebook also will help you as a book which you can refer later once you have learned. Okay, so this is a very good way to start learning Python on Jupyter Notebook, which also will serve as a notebook for you anytime you would like to refer. So for this, I've selected Markdown and I'm going to type hash and here let's type something. So we are going to understand what is a data frame by reading a CSV file. Okay, so hit shift plus enter. So it becomes a header for you. Now let's write the code. First thing, you will be importing pandas. Pandas is the library. In case you are not sure what is pandas, how to install pandas, I have already explained that in my previous video. So please do watch that in case you do not have much knowledge around pandas and you have not installed pandas. As and I am going to say pd. So what happened? The pd becomes the alias name which is going to utilize this pandas library. So how do you utilize it? Let, let me show you. I'm going to create a variable called df1. Now, what is this df? df means data frame. I'm creating a variable. You can give any name, but to learn data frame, I'm simply keeping it as df so that it becomes quite easy to understand. This is a data frame variable. So df1 is a variable and my goal is to read a CSV file. So how do you read a CSV file? Simply you take the alias name. What is the alias name here? pd is the alias name so pd dot then you write the functions available in that library so one of the function that is available is read underscore csv okay now you can see the moment i'm typing this entire list is coming this also the, how do you enable it i have shown it in my jupyter notebook playlist okay in case you would like to enable this uh, autocomplete feature so please do watch my video so here i have the read csv now within this after you write this, use two parentheses, open and close parentheses, and within this, you have to provide the path of the CSV file. Now, let me show you. I have got a CSV file. Okay, here I have got a CSV file. And if you don't know how to, where to get this CSV file, if you go through my first video where I am teaching pandas, uh, right, the very first video of this playlist, there you will be knowing where to, you know, get this kind of CSV files. Now, I have this. I'm going to highlight this, hit on shift key, right click. And I'm going to click on copy as path. Simple. Let's go back. And here I'm going to simply paste it. So when you do copy as path, you also get the double quotes with it. Now the problem with this syntax is anywhere you have a backward slash, Python won't recognize it. It will recognize it as an escape character and will throw error. That's where you write a syntax called R. Simple as small keyword called R. R means regular. Okay. Now once you write this, if I'm going to print df1, 
simply type df1 shift enter now here you will have a question why didn't you write print command why did you simply say df1 let me tell you when you are writing print and then within parenthesis i am saying df1 this variable and if i am going to hit on shift plus enter you can see the data has appeared no doubt but it did not beautify it did not appear in a proper tabular format you can see you know i am not able to match the data it is everywhere now data frame is a recognized variable when you simply take the name of the data frame and hit on shift plus enter it will it will automatically understand it's a tabular data and it will go to show you in a proper way you don't have to go with a print command okay so simply type df1 shift plus enter so what we have learned now we have learned a method from pandas called read underscore csv through which you can read a csv file and show the data in a tabular format okay now the next question comes how can you read an excel file okay fine let's go for it now let's write data frame so anytime you would like to have a tabular data remember change the drop down to markdown and simply say hash data frame read excel file shift enter okay now let's see how do you read a excel file now the same thing we have already imported pandas you don't have to repeat the same code several times here you can do it but again not required because on the top you have already imported now only thing i'm doing i'll create a variable called data frame 2 so what is a data frame now data frame is a variable which can hold your tabular data which has rows and columns pretty simple that is a data frame so i'm saying df2 equals to when you write equals to you can give a space equals to space this is the proper way then you say pd the alias name dot read underscore excel okay this is the method read underscore excel and then i am going to provide the excel file let's imagine you know you might be having some excel file where you have some data just pick that one or else this is my excel file which contains you know few columns uh, and few rows okay so i'm just picking that same process shift highlight shift right click and then copy as well go back to jupyter notebook and simply paste it because it will al already have double quotes again to avoid error simply write the r keyword hit on escape so r done now let's print df2 df2 shift enter now you can see there is a star symbol that means it is processing okay remember when you see the star symbol it is still processing just wait for few seconds okay now the process is complete the star is gone and you can see the output has appeared for me so what are the data that excel contains You know, the exact data has appeared over here. Okay, now I understood how to read from a CSV file which contains the extension of .csv, and an Excel file which contains the extension of .xlx. These are two different files. Excel files, but again in two different formats: comma separated values, and this is XLS. Okay, these two things we have learned. Now the next thing that we wanted to learn: what if is it possible I create a dictionary variable? and pass the dictionary variable and create a table so what is a dictionary variable if you have learnt a bit of python so you can see this is a dictionary variable start from a curly braces and inside that i have got keys and these are the values list of values okay you can see the list of values are there name date of joining salary now let me simply copy this to here so that i don't spend time in creating or typing this so done now how do you convert this dictionary variable to a data frame variable so same way simply write df3 equals to i am taking the alias name pd dot now when you have to convert simply say data frame using this data frame function i'll be able to convert it to a data frame variable so for that inside this function simply uh, you know go ahead and enter the variable now shift plus end now before that let's write df3 shift plus enter and you can see this dictionary variable which had name a b c d e now you can see it has converted to a name column now date of joining which has got different date of joinings now it converted to a column right different salaries now converted into column now you got this three important learnings of data frame 
to read a csv read underscore csv to read an excel read underscore excel to convert a dictionary you are simply saying dot data frame pd dot data frame and passing the dictionary variable so three things are clear okay now proceed next okay now next thing i am going to talk about another function called shape okay shape so what is the shape i am going to show you so for example i would like to know this data frame three variable we have created which contains this data i would like to know how many rows are there if it is a big excel file for example the first one df1 okay it is a huge one it has got multiple rows so i just want to understand how many rows and columns are there now for that simply i'm first let's give it a heading say hash and then i'm going to say data frame shape okay we'll learn about this shift enter now let's take the variable df3 okay df3 sorry df1 the first one okay the first one contains a lot of data let's take that so df1 dot simply say shape okay that will also automatically come okay the auto complete is slightly slow now if you simply say shape and doesn't require any parenthesis simply hit on shift plus enter just a second shape enter shift plus enter now you can see it tells me the data frame variable contains 365 rows and 10 columns okay the same thing you can apply for df3 for example df3 let's apply it for df3 so df3 dot shape shift enter and you can see it says five rows you can see five rows one two three four five rows and then three columns getting it now let's say you just like to know only the row not the columns okay how to do that for that simply write for example for df3 we will try for df3 uh, so simply say take some name let's say i'm saying rows and i'm saying columns okay any variable you would like to type you can type it and equals to i'm saying df3 dot shape shift enter so what happens shape enter and let's say print rows if i say rows shift enter it simply says this df3 contains only five rows okay you can see five rows right one two three four five Getting it sim similar way if you would like to print column simply take the variable name that you have declared here CULS and hit on shift plus enter. So it says it has got three. So pretty simple ones. Okay. Now let's say um, I would like to uh, print the top values. Only the top few values. Okay. Now for that simply write the data frame variable dot head and this has to be enclosed by parenthesis shift enter. So what it does, it generally gives you the top list of uh, rows, even though it contains large set of data, it will just give you a top set of rows just to, you know, if you like to see something or verify certain things, then this is the, this one will be pretty useful. Let's say I would like to only see the top two or top three, same thing, just go with df1 dot head and you can pass the parameter called two. That means I would like to see only, only the top two or the top ten, whatever you like to shift enter. And then you can see it only gave me the top two rows. Same thing, just the opposite of it is something called tail. Okay, for example, I'm saying df uh, tail, and I'm going to shift enter. It gives me the bottom set of rows. And same thing, you can also do df one dot tail, and inside this, I'm passing let's say three rows I need. From the from the bottom shift enter it gave me last three rows okay pretty simple commands and pretty useful commands okay you got it now let's say i would like to um, this is the df3 uh, data frame variable df3 which contains this data let's say i would like to print from one to three okay so you can give also a range okay now in python you have learned about slicing so how to do that let me show you so i'm saying df3 okay within the square bracket i'm saying start from one first you know first index and then end before three that means if i'm going to shift plus enter it only shows me two data that means start from one so you can see 
it has started from 1 which is b right and end before 3 that means 2 until 2 okay so you can see bc should be the output okay b and c is the output so these are the various different things that you have learned today so let's quickly go through the first thing that you have learned is read from csv read underscore csv is the method to read from excel it is read underscore excel simple now to convert a data table into data frame you have used data frame function and then for a shape you would like to know how many rows and columns you simply type dot shape with the data frame variable done um, then if you would like to get the rows or specifically columns then you write rows comma columns equals to the data frame variable dot shape and then type whatever you need rows or columns then head df dot one dot head means it will give you the top set of uh, rows and columns if you write pass a parameter then it will only give you the restricted number of rows same thing goes with the tail if you write tail it will give you the bottom ones if you write three then it will giving the bottom three okay now if you would like to only fetch the specific rows and columns from the data frame then you use the slicing in python uh, by using the square bracket and mentioning the first index and the last index okay so that way you get the the data in between okay starting from first index and ending before the third index so i have got two values so these are the couple of useful learnings let's proceed to the next video and learn lot many things around data frame so thank you guys for watching let's move on to our next topic